so nice to be here. Uh, this is great. This isn't my first time in Tucson, but it's my first time uh, playing in a haunted house. So that's pretty, that's pretty exciting. That's where my career is at uh, right now. You know, last night I played in a basement in downtown Phoenix, uh, a desert area that shouldn't have a basement. And they had a basement that we went to through an alley, and tonight we're in a haunted house. This is great. It's wonderful. I love it. By the way, big fan. I love it. This is exactly why, like, I like hipsters. This is what they do. You know? Like, most people would look at this and be like, tear it down. Tear it down. We're going to make a sharp-angled condo out of this. And not hipsters. Hipsters are like, we can turn this into a hotel. And a music venue. And a bar. And another bar. And a coffee shop. And a bar. More bars. What if you can drink everywhere? Everyone who works here is an authentic hipster. They're not the fake ones who just got the ears for no reason. You know, they weren't trying to fit in. They got them. They're real hipsters. Like, they're polite and not polite all at the same time. That's a real hipster. Real hipsters have customer service and bad customer service in the same sentence. That's how it is. We checked in. They smiled through a mask. I can tell because of the crinkles in the eyes. That's how you can tell when someone smiles with the mask on. And then, they're like, welcome. And here's the rules. And then, and then, but polite, but rules. And then I'm like, I have a question. And he was gone. So it was like a mixture of welcome and an unwelcome. And I like that. That's probably how this place was in the 30s. You know? I think it was nice when Don John Dillinger showed up here. I called him Don Dillinger because I had one cocktail. That's where I'm at. I'm a lightweight. I'm not eating any bread, so all it takes is one cocktail. You ever not eat bread for a day, and then you're like, oh, I get drunk from sniffing a drink. You need that bread to soak up. But yeah, it's nice we're staying at the hotel, my fiance and I, and we didn't know anything about it, other than it's a cool looking old classic building. And then while we're in the room, it's just a tiny room with a bed and a little desk. It looks like some place like Bukowski got drunk and wrote, you know? <laughs> That's what it looks like up there. And I'm like, ooh, this is artsy. And then we sat down and then quickly found out there's no plugs. There's no... Do you need to charge anything? Well, then you don't. All right? I'm telling you, you don't. There's, there's no plugs. And then, uh, then she's, like, Googling the hotel. She's like, this place is cool. And she's like... Oh, it says this is one of the most haunted places in the entire country. And I'm like, huh? And I go, how haunted? And she's like, well, there's like a Wikipedia page for like each room, pretty much. And she starts going down the room numbers going, yeah, you'll wake up with a lady on your bed on that one. This one will lock you in the bathroom. And she's like, and she, I'm waiting for our room number. That's all I'm waiting for. And I'm like, because there's no... You know what's worse than being in a haunted house? Is being in a haunted room. Because where do you go? You know? Like, it's not... There's no, like, oh, maybe that's just a shadow. There are no shadows. You're in a small... Everything's here. You know? You just gotta run out of there. That's terrifying. There's no TV. That's usually my defense. For I've, I've stayed in places that I assumed was haunted. I stayed at a hotel in uh, Aiken, South Carolina. And I, I walked in, it looked old, and I asked the lady behind the counter, she's a very nice southern lady. And uh, I was like, when was this place built? She's like, it was built in 1898. And I was like, wow, that's pretty old. I'm like, is it haunted? She's like, well. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking for a hard no right now, man. I'm looking for a stern, you're fine. And she gave me a very loose, well. <laughs> So that night, I spent the entire night with Sports Center on, on the TV, because in my mind, that will keep the ghosts away. In my mind, the ghosts will come by, like, oh, he's still watching sports highlights. We'll have to catch him later. There's no TV up there. They're gonna know. Yeah? They're gonna know. We're just ready to be terrified. I wonder, it must be fun being a ghost. You know, because it's not always just scaring people. You just get to watch people when they think they're not being watched. <laughs> you know, you ever have one of those moments where you got the house to yourself, you're just naked, dancing in front of the mirror, and your significant other walks in, and you're like, hey, what? I thought Tuesdays were my day! You know, like, that's what ghosts
Those get to see you all the time without the interruption. Just like, wow, that's where you're taking this. Okay. Like, before I came down, uh, my fiance was helping me put Vaseline on my tank. Because, uh, well, because I worked out this morning. We ran on the treadmill and we had breakfast afterwards, so all my sweat dried while I was sitting and I got a little rash in the tank. And then I'm like, how am I supposed to do this show? These people are expecting me to be all suave and I got a rashy tank. So there I am, just doing like a yoga pose in the bed. She's just putting a little bit of Vaseline on my tank and I'm like, John Dillinger's in the corner right now. Here. Woo!